Hello my fellow Mushroom Game Enjoyers, my name is Marple Cello and welcome to a new episode of my Reboot Progression series. Last episode we defeated Chaos Vellum and Princess Snow and with this we also cleared all the goals I set for myself for the first chapter. This episode I'm gonna show you my goals for chapter 2. I will also unlock our last arcane symbol, level up some more Legion characters and improve our equipment even further. So if you guys like the series, give this video a thumbs up and if you want to see how the series goes on, consider to subscribe to my channel. You guys also gave me a lot of great tips in the comments of the last videos. This really helps out a ton, so thanks and keep it going I guess. One of you guys also pointed out that I made a mistake while going over the Vellum fight and he was totally right. Vellum's tail does not take damage, it sure looks like it, but Vellum's health doesn't actually get slowed while you attack the tail. Thanks again for telling me and if something like this should happen again, let me know so I can correct it. Now let's get to the goals of my second chapter. I want to defeat all bosses until easy will. Most of them I never faced before, so this will be quite the journey. To accomplish this, I want to star force my gear to at least 17 stars and this time I'm gonna try to enhance my gear while some sort of star force event is going on. In that way we make the most of our meso. We also gonna aim for unique potentials on most of our gear. But if the opportunity comes up to get some more legendary potentials like with the recent miracle time event, I'm gonna of course try my luck. And for flames, we still gonna aim for a flame score around 75. We also start to complete the world quests at Haven and the Dark World Tree. These weeklies both reward their own currency that can be traded for our next gear upgrades, the Absolab set. But to be able to get this equipment, we also have to defeat the next bosses, Lotus and Damien. These bosses also drop their own currency and in addition with the weekly currency, we can then trade these in for the equipment. The Absolab set is level 160 equipment and that makes it even more expensive to enhance than our Fafnir gear. So I'm gonna definitely try to transpose my gear over. The gear not only has great stats, the set bonus is also quite nice and we still gonna keep our 3 piece Fafnir set as well. Now let's begin with the episode. I'm gonna start my day by spending some of the meso I earned in the last episode and star force this ring. I know that I told you guys that I'm gonna wait till the event is happening but the ring is only item level 120 and won't be that expensive. At least I hope so. And it's also maxed out at 15 stars. I probably want to use this ring, John's treasure ring and two event rings as my drop gear in the future. This will provide us with additional meso and nodes while we grind and we also get some more familiar card drops. And of course we can wear the drop gear while we open a boss chest. Ah, oh, come on, of course we are stuck at the most expensive step. Done. Cool cool cool, this only took us around 240 mil. Was this really worth it? Probably not. Let me put this thing back on and see where we're at right now. The star forcing should have given us like 15 stat, not really that great, but at least the ring is done for now. Oh, and the reboot awake ring is done as well because it cannot be star forced. My daily boss run I got a flame and I believe I'm now gonna use it on my Fafnir top. And we got nothing. I can't help it, we gonna buy some more. I mean, there's always a super small possibility that we could get a really good flame. But I guess by now you already know how I handle the flaming. I'm gonna buy five at a time and see what we get. Come on, on the first flame so I can use the other... F okay. From the last flame though, we also get nothing. Okay, okay, let's buy five more. And another 47 mil down the drain. Okay, we are gonna settle with this shitty flame over here, cause I already spent way too much money on flames again. Was this worth it for 50 decks and 50 luck? I probably don't think so, but it is how it is. I'm just gonna throw the last two flames at the condensed power crystal, maybe we have more luck with this one. And of course not. Because I'm still fully buffed and even have an MVP buff, I'm now gonna go for a little grinding session. The weekly event is still going strong and I have another ticket I want to use up. Here's the amount of XP I got while I used the ticket. In hindsight, I should have definitely waited till I get a rune. That would have maximized the possible experience I could have received, but now I know that for the next time. And 
And we are done. And I believe we got around 1% experience. Uh, it could be worse. I'm gonna continue my grinding session till my buffs will run out and then I will do my first weeklies for the Absolab star. The first set of weeklies will take place near Sleepywood at the Dark World Tree. If we head there for the first time, we see a shortcut scene that deals with Damien soldiers. They seem to be corrupted though and that's why we help Alcetto, the senior officer, to keep his now demonized soldiers at bay. The weeklies in this region took me around 5 minutes, mainly because we already have such a high level. And now that we went through all the quests, we get our first 20 faint stigma spirit stones. 20 of these, together with an item we can get from Damien, can be traded for 1 stigma coin. We need 2 for the shoulders and 5 for the weapons, so this will take us some time I guess. To unlock Damien, I have to complete the Heroes of Marple storyline first, or at least the 4 chapter to be exact. But this is something I will do at a later point. The next set of weekly quests will take place in Haven. We already unlocked this region at level 199. From that point on we could have also started the weeklies, but the mobs who have to hunt for this quest can also range till level 220. I'm also done with these quests and for completing them we receive 12 diffusion line energy cores. And together with the cores we can obtain from defeating Lotus, these can then also first be traded into coins and then into equipment. To unlock Lotus we have to complete the Blackhaven storyline, also something I will do at a later point. The moment I was finished someone announced the MVP buff, so I'm gonna use my last DT coupon, grind till the buffs run out and then I'm gonna train my next legion character. The next class I'm gonna level is Aran. This class also got released around the same time as Evan if I'm right. I at least remember that there were a lot of errands around back when I played with my little brother. Aaron's tale begins with us awakening on the frozen isle of Rien. Lillian, the last member of the Rian clan, guides us throughout the challenges of our memory loss and our diminished abilities. Thanks to Lillian's training, we rediscover some of our lost power and we are already free to go where we please. Up to level 20, I'm gonna level at Stone Golems. This place is just too nostalgic for me. Lore-wise, Eren is also one of the six hero classes that originally sealed away the Black Mage. Nearly all of Eren's attacks are ice-themed and most of them can be triggered by using using your attack button together with different directional inputs. So somewhat like a special move in a fighting game I would say. It's not for everybody I guess but I kinda enjoy it. You can also use most of the skills by themselves, but they do a little bit less damage that way. For level 20 to 30 I'm gonna do evil eyes again and I'm also gonna switch as soon as I get them for my monster collection. The monster collection is another feature that allows us to collect monsters throughout Marple's story. Each of them only has to be collected once and the progress is for the whole account. For completing a set we can get different smaller rewards. In addition we are then able to use the monsters and send them on missions. If we then send them on a mission we have to wait for a certain amount. After this time is up they Come back with different stuff. This can range from reward points to cubes and potential scrolls, so definitely nice to have. Now that I have hit level 30, we gonna of course do team dungeons. I'm gonna start with the one we haven't done yet, Gold Beach. First I have to do my job change quest though. As we are called back to Rien, we soon meet Maha, the ghost that possesses the giant pole arm in the town center. He is supposed to be a good friend of us, but sadly we can't remember him. After we then complete some trials for the master blacksmith, that's also a big panda, we soon remember our old friend. Our stand is now overjoined and restores a part of our old power and this also means we are now done with the job change. Now let's go over Gold Beach. This team dungeon takes place on a tropical beach resort. Gold Richie, the apparently richest man in the Marple world, has invited us. As soon as we arrive though, we are mistaken as a new employee and are tasked to hunt all sorts of different black slimes that plague the resort. After we help every single employee at the resort, we can finally battle the black slime captain Dagu at the end of the team dungeon. Oh, a face tattoo. Upon completion we are rewarded with some earrings that I'm gonna star force to make the leveling a bit easier as well as a medal. Now I'm quickly gonna do Elenel Fairy Academy and Rihanna straight. I already gone over these in the last episode so I'm just gonna skip through them. Ok ok, Elenel is done and it took me around 34 minutes. You already know by now I'm gonna star force the stuff I get for doing this team dungeons. Now let's go and do Rihanna straight. 
Cool, cool, cool. I'm also done with this one and it took me around 35 minutes. Pretty close to the other one, but with the occasional doggy stop though. Isn't that so, Proshka? But now with the team dungeons behind us, let me do the next job change. We are once again called back to Rian because some strange behavior of the giant pole arm. As we learned from Maha, the big red jade that decorated it was stolen. This jade is coincidental also the power source of Maha, so we have to get it back for him. We soon tracked down the thief, a big crow, and managed to defeat it. But also kinda forget to take the jewel back with us. Now we have to get back in our memories and see how we first got the jewel back in our past life. This apparently made it possible to extract the jewel from our memories. Don't ask me how though. We bring the jewel back to Maha and are done with the job change. To get to level 120, that's where I'm gonna finish this character for now, I'm gonna use the maps that are suggested by the map guide. I'm gonna start out on the swamp map and hunt some copper drags until I hit level 70. Then I'm gonna move to Orbis and stay there till I'm level 80. Level 80. This took me around 13 minutes. I used some EXP coupons as well as a gold monster park potion though, so it was a bit faster. My next stop will be Verna Mine, Shaft 4 to be exact, and I'm gonna stay there till I'm level 90. I'm about to get my level up, and there it is. This took me around 30 minutes. I know, not the fastest time, but I'm also not really in a rush. I'm now gonna Star Force my gear some more and then move to Sunset Road. Okay, okay, this map kinda gets on my nerves, so I'm gonna finish level 100 at Hidden Street. And we are level 100. This took me 22 minutes though. For the next job change we have to once again go back to Rien, but this time we have to fight Maha. This is done pretty fast and after the fight we are already rewarded with our 4th job advancement. Now I'm gonna look for a rune and together with our MVP buff this should give us a nice amount of levels when we fight normal Zakum. All the way up to level 107 and we also got a condensed power crystal. Let's head to Skynes 2 next and I'm gonna stay there till level 115. I changed my mind, I finished the last 5 levels here on Toy Factory, the whole process took me 14 minutes. I'm now gonna do the Lion King's castle quest till I can enter the first map, so I can maybe collect some more familiars for the batch of this region. Nice Areno, level 120. With this I'm done with this char and that for a while. Aaron's link skill, combo kill blessing increases the combo orb experience by 650%. These orbs appear for every 100 mobs we defeat on a map, so pretty handy while we grind. This legion block gives us a 70% chance to recover some of our max HP with each attack. Not the best bonus, but also better than nothing. As I'm already on the legion grind, I'm now gonna create my next legion character, Mercedes. Mercedes is also one of the 6 hero classes. We are the king of the elves and have joined Freud and the others to become the heroes of the Marple world, who have fought against the black mage centuries ago. During the fight we have been gravely injured, but thanks to the silent crusade itself we managed to survive. Kinda funny how everything intertwines, we could say that our first character kinda saved Mercedes while we done the questline for the silent crusade. After the crusade left we awake and speak with Afrian. He warns us that the black mage's curse would affect our kingdom as the destiny of the elves was tied to that of their ruler. Now we rush back to LOL where we see that our subjects are freezing in ice one by one. But before we also take a good nappy we close the borders to prevent the curse from spreading into the Apple world. Centuries later we awake and see that everybody else is still frozen. As we also realize that we have lost all of our power, we have then to do some tutorial quests where we hunt different puppet trees. These soon don't challenge us anymore and we decide to leave our cozy village and are able to venture into the world. I believe you are free to go where you want from this point on, but I gone through the quest line some more until I reached the talking tree. At that moment I had enough and went to the golem temple. And we are level 21. I'm now gonna venture in the North Forest maps and hunt some more eye monsters for my monster collection. On the level up, cursed eyes are done.
Ja? Oh, Cold Ice out, so dann. Nice. Awesome, we have all monsters collected. Now we could claim the reward, but I'm gonna do this on my main character. We could also start our first exploration, but you have to be level 33 to do this. I'm now gonna finish grinding over here until I hit level 30. And done. Now it's time for the job change. For this we have to return back to the king's seat. There we have to play a giant harp that calls a great spirit. His spirit then gives us a little pep talk and then the job change is done. The weapon of choice for our little elven king is a bowgun and this class also has a lot of stuff that can combo into each other but I believe we won't use that at all while we level. For the remaining leveling process I'm gonna pretty much do exactly the same as with the other two characters. First I'm gonna do all three team dungeons. So let's begin. I have already cleared Gold Beach and Rien, but I just hit level 60, so we now can do the drop change. For this we just have to go through some dialogue and it's already complete. But now let's continue. We are done with the theme dungeons and this took me exactly 46 minutes. I wonder if I'm still gonna do this on my, I don't know, 8 character or something. I guess we'll see. For now I'm just gonna grind till level 120 and see how long this takes me. I also feel like this class would be awesome for people that like to jump a lot, as some of his skills require Require you to be in mid air. I kinda like the playstyle, but I think if I'm gonna play a range class in the future, it's not this one. And here I am again. It took me an hour and 40 minutes, but now I'm gonna hit level 115. There we go. I'm gonna stay on this map until I hit level 120. It's just too cozy over here. I can basically just stay here, jump a little bit, and can clear the whole map. This is by far my favorite random event. My fiance also always loves when she sees how focused I am to hit this little red bar. Additionally, we gonna hit level 120 with this minigame. Okay, okay, this whole adventure took me 2 hours and 55 minutes, but I also took some time to record the tutorial stuff for you guys. So I know, excuses. But I'm curious how much I can shorten this time in the future. What do you guys think? Is the time okay or is it sluggish? And how long do you guys take an average to get a character? to level 120. I would love to see all the different times you guys take to level a legion mule to level 120. So let me know your times down in the comment section. But let's get back to Mercedes. Her legion block reduces the skill cooldown of some skills by a small amount. Hey, that's pretty good I would say. Her link skill elven blessing increases the experience we receive. I think 15% additional experience is always nice, but that's also it for the legion grind. At least for today, because it's already dang late and I'm gonna head to bed now. Hmm? Oh man. I started the day out by doing my daily boss run and we got Chaos Horntail for our monster collection. It's an act though, I'm not really sure why. Anyways, I'm now gonna complete the run. Okay, okay, we are gonna buy another bag. I still run out of space from time to time when I do my boss run. This time I'm gonna take the production bag. Now that's better. Oh, additionally, we completed the challenge for the 6th star event. This one rewards us with 3 inventory expansion coupons. I'm gonna use these like the ones before we already got. One for each inventory besides from the one for chairs. I probably finished the challenge while leveling the Mercedes. Perfect, even more space. However, back to the Arkin River dailies. I finished my dailies and there's a MVP train happening right now. Since I have a little bit more time on my hands before I have to work, I'm gonna grind out the remaining XP to get to level 235. And we are done. This took me a bit more than an hour. The MVP buff also just vanished a few minutes ago, so perfect timing I would say. Level 235 means that we are now able to place another skill in our Vimar tricks. I'm gonna take the Sand Advanced Blessing for now. We still have some space in our auto buff slots. I skimmed through some of the familiars we got and we received one with item and meso drop rate. He increases our drop rate by 20% as long as he's summoned. That's pretty handy, but I also should really try to to get my first batch soon. If we at least have one batch, we can already summon two familiars at once. The other ones we got were all useless though. I'm also now able to collect a reward for chapter 1 of the 6th star event. Actually, I'm already R for a while, but I don't want to forget it, so I'm now gonna collect it. This reward contains a lot of stuff that I already went over back in episode 3. The most stuff we get I won't even use on this character. The vac pad though is pretty cool, we can stash it away until the one we already have runs out. Then we have a new one ready as soon as this happens. You also get 1200 arcane symbols, but I'm not sure if I should 
should just try to max out one symbol or if I should split them? Let me know your guys opinion about that down in the comment section. On top of that we also get the XP portion that gives us one level up if we are between level 200 and level 209. I'm gonna also try to use that on another character. Furthermore we get the arcane umbra weapon box. This is a level 200 weapon that also can't be star forced or enhanced since it's also a event item. I already have the Absolab weapon on this character so I'm gonna bank that one for a future boss mule. Maybe he can use it. We also get a shiny prestige box and 20 karma solid cubes. This box contains one legendary circulator allowing you to reset your inner ability directly to legendary. Pretty handy but we already have a legendary inner ability so that's also something for another character. Additionally we get 5 chaos circulators and 3 black circulators. These are both handy if if you already have the inner abilities you want and now just want to get good numbers. And of course some honor medals that give you a good amount of honor. Of course I'm gonna use all the medals on this character. Let's use one black circulator and see what we get. Ooh 19% don't mind if I do. I believe 20% is the maximum we could possibly get so I gladly take 19% for now. Let me spend some more honor and see if I can get some good abilities. Maybe we can use the circulators that way. Item drop rate, nice. Now let's do the third line. Okay, Meso obtained. I'm gonna take this one for now. I believe I'm set. I'd rather have boss damage but I plan on grinding a lot in the recent future so this will be fine as well. I'm gonna throw the cubes we just got on our emblem. Maybe we can get a lucky tee up or some good stats. Ooh, 30% ignore enemy defense. I'm pretty tempted to keep that, but I believe I'm gonna continue. We got nothing, but I still have this one solid cube over here. Never lucky, I guess. I still have some glowing cubes from the gloves though, so let me use them too. Still nothing. You know what? I'm gonna buy 10 more and see if we get something good. A few moments later. Seven cubes in and we got this potential over here. It's okay for now I guess and I don't believe I get something better with the remaining three. Let's put this back on and see where we at. I kinda feel like I lost range. Ah okay I see why. I had the wrong legion and we also haven't placed Mercedes so let me fix that. 13.6k start. It's still looking a little bit low though but we are also missing some buffs from one pet. But sadly that's also it for today as I already told earlier I have to work now. I'm a nurse in real life and the next few days I have to dive into some night shifts. So I hope that I won't be too wiped out but I will of course show you guys if something important happens. But I believe I won't be actually playing that much. Here we are again. I'm back from work and I'm doing my boss run before I go to bed. We got a her pouch from the Rutabus secret shop and it even got us something good. We got 16 juniper berry seed oils, 20 of them I used to make a wealth potion. I also went ahead and finished my dailies and we can upgrade 3 symbols. Nice Sereno, now we are pretty close to 14k stat. This took us down a good 160 mil though. But that's also it for today. I'm gonna watch some alchemy before I head to that bed and do some YouTube. Exactly. As you can probably tell I'm pretty tired. So I'm just gonna do Ursus before I head to work after I went to sleep and that's probably it for today. Another short day. I just came from work. The Yeti delivery week has ended and now the slime healing spa week begins. This event is pretty nice if you want to level a character from level 150 to level 200, but sadly I just have my Evan. You can enter 3 times a day per world for 100 coins per entry. Then you have a chance to get a random amount of levels. The higher your level gets, the lower is the chance to get multiple level ups, kinda like a growth potion. And this also means I now have to cap coins with my Evan, so I can get at least something from the event. To my luck I still have 300 coins left from the time I leveled him up though, so I can start right away. So let's see how this works. I hope we don't have to afk over here for an eternity. I didn't read the text. Have I like to collect the slimes? 
Nope, doesn't look like it. So I basically just have to chill over here for 30 seconds, okay. Four levels, nice. I guess I'm gonna show you guys how many levels I got after I went through this stuff. The last one just gave me one level, so my Evan is now level 161. I guess that's also it for today. I already done everything else in terms of dailies and stuff. I lied, I went up a little bit early before work so I can cap my coins another time and my Evan is now level 163. Now that's really it for today. I'm back from work again, done all the daily stuff for today and for our stamp we get some more tasty points. With them I'm gonna increase my crit rate some more. Now I'm gonna head to bed, I want to be up a little bit early before I will go to work tomorrow so we can do the questline for the next region, Asphera. I went up early, but I totally forgot that I also have to do the stuff with my Evan each day. Anyways, he's now level 171. This means we got 8 levels from our 3 uses today. Let's quickly cap the coins again. And 30 minutes later I'm finally done, but I hit level 173. Now I'm gonna quickly do my daily stuff. I finished my dailies and we don't got any more upgrades, but we can claim our money from Apple Tour. Now I'm above 1 billion meso and that's for the first time. Now let's begin with the questline for the next region. This one will also give us our last arcane symbol by the way. The quest begins as Jean alerts us that a group of strangers had descended upon Moras. The group of strangers turned out to be a team sent to our help, comprising a Cygnus knight named Olier, a resistance member named Schubert and a magician called Melange. And these guys found themselves drawn to the Arcane River's dungeons. There they stumbled upon a sealed door exuding an eerie light. And as fate would have it, we cross paths with this group, learning that they are hailed from various corners of the alliance united in their pursuit to help us against the Black Mage. Olier, the Thunderbreaker, then explains to us that the power of transcendence lays behind this sealed door. Then the door suddenly opens and we get sucked in. The resistance guy managed to call his airship at the last second though. The ship then gets pulled with the currents and begins to extend vertically until it finally launches out of the Arcane River into the air above Asphera. And that's also when we first see the Black Sun. Pretty epic. In the distance a masked figure then appears that kinda reminds me of the anime Dead Man Wonderland. Anyways, this person seems to dislike us as she blows our ship out of the sky. We and Olier get separated from the rest of the team and wonder what had happened. We try to regroup with the other team members by firing a flare and this turned out to be successful and we are soon back with the group. As we are reunited, the mage of the group points out that there is no sun in this region and then gives us a staff which is apparently able to play back memories. After hunting some poor creatures to power the staff, we were able to see a memory of Tanner. In this memory, we see her captured by Will and this guy is apparently a commander of the black mage. We watch him cast a spell on Tanner, trying to transform her into the sun of the new world, but then a portal appeared and from it came a laser beam aimed at Will. He dodged it though, which loosens his hold on Tanner, and then she fell into the Origin Sea. Just then, the flashback is over and Will suddenly appears and starts to attack us. Ulier manages to block the attack with her sword though, and by the way, if there was a pirate class with a sword, I would totally play it. Anyways, Will left and we go back to the camp to repair some communication device. We manage to repair the thing and are called by Nineheart, who tells us to protect Tanner and stop Will's ritual. As we head out, Melange tries to explain us what exactly had happened and apparently Tanner had touched some kind of mirror and this one's power now is flowing throughout the Origin Sea. In some way this also meant that Will is too busy to deal with us at the moment because of Tanner's mirror world. So we are kinda free to continue. Soon we stumble upon a grave and decide to use the stuff again to see what's up with that. Upon using the stuff we see how Tanner and her sister are coming into existence. This takes place in the Radiant Temple and on top of that Tanner's sister can hear the voice of some sort of overseer and that grants her the title of Aeona. This also makes Tanner the backup Aeona if anything would ever happen to her sister. We then go through another of Tanner's memories, where we come to the suspicion that the Black Mage's ultimate goal is the destruction and recreation of the world. Now we finally manage to find Tanner and with the help of a pulley system we manage to recover her from the Origin Sea. 
We prepared to take her back, but only a bandage came off, revealing a spider mark from Will's attack. And the lightkeepers that helped us before really hate spiders, so we had to fight our way back through them. Then Will suddenly arrives and we have a little dispute with Olier about who of us saves the other. We are the hero of the story though and that's why we stay behind with Thana. We then nearly get thrown into the origin sea, but get saved at the last second by the masked figure and are teleported back to the base camp. Tana has now become the White Sun and the only way to help her is to face Will who resides inside it. The only way to reach Will is throughout the mirror that he created and this is obviously a trap but we go anyways. As we go through it we see that the whole mirror world is now a recreation of the Radiant Temple. Once again we use the memory stuff and witness a memory of Tana who is confronting Eona for casually destroying seven races and Grandis. Eona just said that this is her job and she can't help it, which led Tanner to the decision to face her sister. We are then told by Melange that unlike in the Marple world, the transcendents of Grandis were actively involved in shaping their world. She is also curious about Iona's choice of words, which implied that she seemed to have destroyed the races against her own free will. Then we charge the stuff again and witness the last memory of Tanner, where she killed her sister, causing the power of transcendence to flow into her. Now she is Eona and immediately begins to hear the voices of the Overseer and then realizes that her sister was correct when she told her that she can't free herself from her chains. Tenna however vows to stay herself no matter what. Meanwhile Melange is now sure that if the Black Moon and the White Sun fuse, the Black Mage would gain the power that he pleases. Filled with determination we now vow to stop the ritual and face Will in the Mirror World. At this point we also have to face the story version of Will. The fight was actually pretty easy, I believe Lucid was a little bit harder. I'm really excited to face this boss for real, but this is something for the end of this chapter. After we defeated Will, he now saves Olier from the poison he casted on her. Now the only choice to still stop the ritual is to kill Tana, but as already told earlier, we are the hero of the story, so we can do that. Will now regains his control and summons a giant horde of spiders before he disappears deeper into the mirror world. We still can't move from our battle from Will, but at the moment of our demise Olier appeared to defend us. She is also pushed back though and as everything seems to end, the Cygnus Knights appear throughout the portal and save the day. Melange now summons a portal and we all manage to get back to the base camp. While we leave, we see Will facing the masked figure and once their fight breaks out, the White Sun begins to fuse with the Black Moon, creating Tenebris. And this is also the end of the quest, pretty epic I would say. For completing this questline, we get access to a new spell called True Arachnid Reflection. This is an additional damage spell with a 250 second cooldown that can be used by all classes. At some point I also want to equip this one. And of course we get the symbol for this region. And we still have 100 arcane stones in our inventory, so I can now use them on this symbol. We actually have a lot more, but I'm just gonna use this 100 over here. Tell me what I should do with the other ones so. And all the way to level 5, nice, we are now at 14.2k start. The whole questline took me 55 minutes by the way. I still have some more time before I have to go to work, so I will do my Arcane River weeklies now. I have already finished Erda Spectrum and we have completed another challenge. This means we get another 50 Arcane Stones and I can spend them on my Aspera symbol. All the way up to level 7, let's continue the Arcane River weeklies, we probably gonna get some more upgrades. The Morass symbol gets level 8 and the Arcana symbol is now level 10, nice. And this brings us all the way up to 14.6k start. Now it's time for Ursus and then I have to go to work, so I'm gonna be back tomorrow morning. Here I am again and I done the hot spring stuff for my Evan once again. Now he's level 180 but I'm gonna head to bed now. Okay okay it's two days later. At the day from the last clip I just done my dailies and Ursus as I woke up and yesterday I was so wiped out from work I haven't managed to play at all. But I'm done with the night shifts for this month and I'm now back on the grind. Oh and I believe we're gonna get a level up after I claim the challenge reward.
Yes, we do. I'm gonna start the day off with some cubing. I want to finally get a good potential on my emblem and I'm gonna buy some glowing cubes to get it. I want a unique attack line and one line with ignore enemy defense. That can't be too hard to get. I'm gonna go with uh, 10 cubes at a time and we go with glowing cubes. I totally forgot that we still have these three glowing cubes from the last time. Maybe I should have used them up before I just buy new ones, but now it's too late and it seems like they don't give me anything anyways. Hey, we got it, awesome! Let's slap this bad boy on and see our gains. Ooh, we just got 200k range and are now at 83% ignore enemy defense and that's without any buffs. Pretty good I would say. I believe this actually means our emblem is fine for now. Let's use the hard cubes I have left over to enchant my reboot awake ring. I'm looking for tier ups or 9% main start. There we go, two cubes in, this seems to be my lucky day. Let's see if we can do something with the noble Iphia ring. Nope, but I'm gonna go for two lines main start anyways. I have a lot of mythical cubes and the rings are pretty cheap to enhance because of their low item level. There it is, and this took me 35 cubes. Cool cool cool, let's see how much our stat has risen from these two items. 200 points and I believe we can still do the same to the silver blossom ring if I'm right. Indeed, and this one is actually the cheapest of them all. If we also get 9% luck on this ring, we maybe can reach 15k stat already. Finally, this freaking ring took me 130 cubes. But now we have 9% luck on all of our rings and we are pretty dang close to 15k stat. Today we can also increase our crit rate some more, thanks to the tasty buff. And I should probably do the hot spring stuff for my Evan next, so I don't forget it. Before I can do the hot spring, stuff I first had to cap my coins. This took a while but my Evan is now level 181. It's done and my Evan is level 187. That also means I can lock back onto my main. I decided that I finally will collect the swamp badge. For this I just have to hunt 2 or 3 more cards and I have the whole set. This then unlocks the badge. And I have them all. This took me like 20 minutes. Now we are able to equip 2 familiars at once and also get 1% all start and plus 2 to attack. Just just for equipping the badge. These stat bonuses may look small but we can equip up to 10 badges at a time. For my second familiar I'm gonna pick a red shadow that I found. This one gives 15% ignore enemy defense. It's finally time that I do my weekly bosses again. I'm gonna start out with Princess Snow. The whole thing took 7 minutes and we have 10 pieces now. 5 more and we have our secondary. But besides this I don't got anything. Next I face Pear. I done a little bit too much damage so I had to defeat him in a split form. This wasn't a problem though, I just let myself die so I would lose my head. From this point on I just bursted both Pears down. But because of this mistake, the fight took me a bit more than 4 minutes. Ooh, a sparkling blue potion. This one also works outside of CIA. This will be pretty handy in the future. Next was Queen. She took me 4 minutes and 30 seconds. I got blinded at the end though, so the footage is kinda shitty. The chicken took me a bit more than 3 minutes. I still really hate the pink bean fight, this one is just hella annoying. It took me 3 minutes and 30 seconds to complete and I also haven't got my face accessory yet. Kao Sekum was dead in under 2 minutes and dropped us another cape. 
I was pretty close to get sickness in under a minute, but I was two seconds too slow. I achieved that at normal Hilla though. And we even have another chance to get a pet, but not today I guess. Now I faced Chaos Vellum again. He still took me 8 minutes and 30 seconds to complete and the fight wasn't as clean as I wanted it to be, but I'm getting there. I have sold all the boss crystals we just got and we are now pretty close to 2 bill. Look at this, while defeating Ursus today I finally finished the 10 kills. Now we have the medal and I also got the title, this one is timed though. I am at 15.1k start now and also don't have to care about queuing for Ursus anymore. But my fellow mushroom game enjoyers, I believe that's also a good point to end today's episode. I know there wasn't a lot of action in terms of new bosses, but we set a pretty solid base for the next episode. I will also have a lot more time. I really appreciate all the support you guys give me. I put a lot of effort into these videos and I'm really grateful for every single one of you that is still watching. I can't even put in words how unreal it feels to see how many people are watching this video, so thanks a lot. Have a great week and until next time, Marpelcello out!